this video I want to begin talking about non-harmonic or non-chord tones and uh, define what we mean by that and just give you a brief introduction to the concept of these type, this type of harmonic or actually non-harmonic material and uh, once we've done an introduction like that then we'll spend another couple of videos looking at more specific details uh, regarding the different types of non-harmonic material. So what do we mean by non-harmonic material? Well, first of all, let's just uh, look at some of the different names for the same thing. You know in music theory often we have uh, different names. You remember we talked about consecutive fifths and parallel fifths, and they're exactly the same names, just two different terms for the same thing. Well, this is similar. We can have something called non-harmonic tones, NHTs, or non-chord tones, NCTs. Either term is honestly exactly the same as the other. It means exactly the same thing, it's just different labels, different ways of saying the same thing. And in both these cases, the word tones simply means notes. It means that we are dealing with, if you unpack this, we are dealing with notes in a chord that do not belong to that chord. Or notes in a harmony that do not belong to that harmony. They are non harmonic tones. They are non-chord tones. So what is that all about? How can you have chords and then have notes that don't belong? Well, in this style, in the common practice era, there is a balance between dissonance and consonance. Consonance essentially means that the chords sound pretty and nice and, and settled together. That there's no sense within the chord that the chord has to move somewhere or something has to happen for tension to be released. Dissonance is exactly the opposite. It introduces tension into the chord. It introduces a moment where when you hear the chord played, you know that you can't just rest there. Something has to happen to release the tension, to resolve the tension. And in common practice harmony, there is a balance between consonance, harmony at rest, and dissonance, active harmony that wants to go somewhere. And so playing with this balance is really, and controlling the dissonance, controlling the way that sounds are made that are not, uh, that are not consonant, that are not settled, that are not feeling at rest controlling the way those sounds are made, when they're made, and how they are handled, and how they are resolved, and how they ultimately settle back to being, to feeling settled and non-active. Controlling all of that is really what common practice harmony is about. It's a large part of what common practice harmony is about. Certainly in earlier time periods there was a greater tolerance of dissonant sounds. Certainly in later time periods, getting into the 20th century, composers start experimenting again with the idea of having dissonance and being okay with it not having to resolve or having to settle itself. But in the common practice era, if you have dissonance, it is usually to create a tension for a moment that is then resolved into a consonance, into a sound that is more settled, more pleasing to the ear, or at least to the common practice ear, if you will. So, what does that look like in music? Well, let's step over here and have a look. Here's some examples. Any note that doesn't belong to a chord is ultimately going to be dissonant in that chord. Here we have uh, a chord of G, B, and D, and the G is doubled, no problems there. It's a G major chord. And then we have this note F in it. And that F is kind of clashing with the note, uh, with the other notes in the chord. It sits right here and it kind of creates uh, a tension in the chord. But it happens in between two harmonies. This is a G harmony, this is an E minor harmony. All the notes here and all the notes here are in and of themselves comfortable and settled. It's this one note here that doesn't really fit in this harmony unless you're thinking of it as a G7 chord and then there's all sorts of issues with that. Uh, or, and it doesn't really happen in this harmony where you've got an E minor chord, you wouldn't normally have an F in it. So this note is kind of dissonant. But it happens in between the two chords such that we call this a dissonance, but we call it a passive dissonance. It is dissonant, but you hardly notice it because you don't really sit and settle on that note. You never really hear that note right against the other notes 
that would create tension and dissonance. Uh, so it just kind of passes. In fact, the name for this particular type of non-harmonic tone is a passing tone because it passes between two notes that are in the chord. And we're going to look at some different types of passive non-harmonic tones. That'll be the next video. Then two videos down the road, we'll be looking at some of these types of dissonance. This is active dissonance. Now notice, in fact, this is exactly the same thing with one exception where here the F occurred in between the two chords, here the F happens on the chord, it happens and clashes with the E minor chord, then we hear the note that actually belongs in the chord. So here the dissonance is in between, here the dissonance happens on the chord with the rest of the notes in the chord. And then you get to the point where there's a note that really belongs in the chord and you realize this note was just an active dissonance. So we call this active because when the dissonance occurs, you really want to hear it resolve. You really need it to, to sort itself out and get back into the key. And just for us not to have a, a note that just that, that, is, that is clashing against the rest of the harmony. So, uh, because that's uh, 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 an important part of the, uh, the way this harmony is unfolding, because this note here is creating a tension and has to resolve, we call this active. Whereas here, the dissonance does happen, this note doesn't fit in the harmony, but it happens in between and so we don't notice it as much and we consider that a passive dissonance. Any non-harmonic note is ultimately dissonant, it doesn't fit in the harmony. But it can be an active dissonance or a passive dissonance, and we need to kind of understand the difference between the two. So, in the next video, I'll talk a little bit about passive dissonance and what uh, that looks like, and, and uh, in class, we'll kind of discover what it sounds like. And then in the video after that, I'll talk about active dissonance and what those sound like. And again, we'll look at those in class and start experimenting with putting some of these levels of dissonance into our own harmonizations. Thank you.